funny friends. <laughs> I was trying to clear my throat. Right before I hit live, I got a tickle in my throat. <laughs> oh, we got a lot to do today. I hope you're ready for a really fun time. All right, so today is National Tell a Joke Day, right? <laughs> I bet you didn't know that. So I got a silly joke for you. Okay. I have ball yarn, right? <laughs> it's a prop. <laughs> National Tell a Joke Day. So I'm heading off to Hobby Lobby to look at the yarn. And my husband says, have a ball of a time. <laughs> and you know what I said back to him? Let me read my notes here. I said, thanks for knowing me. Oh, wait. Thanks for yarning standing me. Thanks for yarn standing me. Okay, I blew the punchline. <laughs> Let's start over. My husband said, have a ball of a good time. And I said, thanks for yarn standing me. You know, instead of under... Never mind, I can't tell jokes. Let's clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink, clink. <laughs> I am terrible at telling jokes. I got that off the internet, so it wasn't anything <laughs> that I made up. <laughs> All righty, so we got a lot to talk about today, but before we get started, I wanted to show you something my daughter bought for me this last week. I am having a health issue. Hopefully, I go to the doctor on Thursday, and we'll get that, see if that can be taken care of and where to go from there, but she brought this to me on Saturday. These are called squash mellows. This one is a, I think it's a whale shark. But the reason she brought this to me was to cheer me up. But also, look at the name. And you see that? Let me get it out of the light. All right, I'm not doing a very good job of this. There we go. Satchy. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. But since my name is Satch, Sarah Satch, I'm going to call it Satchy. Isn't that cute, though? Both of my granddaughters and even my grandson love these things called squash mallows. Aren't they fun? See, when I'm not even trying to show you the tag, you can see it better. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to show you that. And we have a lot to talk about today. Here's my ball of yarn that was a prop. I'm going to toss that in my scrap bucket. Underneath my desk here, because I work here a lot, I have a tub. And I throw, I roll up the ends of my balls and I throw them in that tub. And then I can come back in and look for scrap yarns later. It's kind of fun. I like having it there. Keeps my room a lot cleaner since this room is a lot smaller than the yarn room that I had before. Okay, so... The joke was a bomb. <laughs> the squash mallow was a hit. <laughs> so, and oh, and we also clinked in. So, what we're going to talk about today is something that I have gotten questions about for as long as I can remember. And it's also something that annoys me. And that is those little holes. Let me grab one of these. When you're doing some rows of double crochets, you get these little holes where your chain three turns. Here's your chain three, you know, and it turns, and the chain three counts as your first double crochet, but it leaves these little holes. For some reason, I guess it disconnected and I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. We have had a little bit of storms this morning, so maybe we're having a little bit of trouble with our connection. So I'm going to say what I said a second ago, just in case you missed it. What we're going to do today <laughs> is we're going to talk about how to get rid of these little holes in three different ways with our chain three. Okay, so I'm going to click over to my other camera and I've got three different swatches there. I'm gonna move that box over and move over. I'm gonna move my coffee cup so I don't spill it because you know I'm clumsy. All right, so there's three different things you can do and I've got three swatches here that have those holes just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And it happens when you chain three, your chain three counts as your first double crochet. I'm gonna move those up out of the way since I'm working with the purple one. And then you, you don't stitch in that first stitch and you stitch in the next one 
and stitch a row of double crochet and it leaves a little bit of a hole there and I don't like that no it wasn't your in it kicked off for just a few minutes it should be back all right so I'm gonna show you three different things that you can do the first one is is super easy and one I use almost always and that is instead of chaining three I chain two so I'll chain two and turn and then go ahead and stitch my double crochet row and that will make it so that it doesn't have as big as a gap but one thing to remember is when you work back make sure that you stitch in that chain two if that chain three counts as a chain or a stitch I mean not a chain um, if your chain three is supposed to count as your first double crochet and you've chained two make sure when you come back around that you stitch in that chain two because it still counts as a stitch and that will help it not be such a big gap okay so that's one thing that you can do and I use this one more times than not all right another thing that you can do is what's called a linked double crochet all right so here I've got this blue one we're supposed to chain three and turn one two three all right now instead of stitching just a regular double crochet in your next stitch we'll stitch what's called a linked double crochet all right and so what you want to do is chain four instead of three then you'll go in that second chain one two with your hook and pull up a loop then you'll go in that fourth chain and pull up a loop all right so now you've got basically a double crochet right I went in the wrong place when you, when you're doing it at the end you want to make sure you go in there okay so um, all right let me start this over so I didn't confuse you when you're doing a link double crochet you're going to chain four you're going to turn you're going to go in the second chain and pull up a loop and instead of going in that fourth chain you're going to go in that stitch down here okay there we go and now you're going to finish that double crochet and what that does is it links your chain to your double crochet okay let me show you again just in case I confused you by what I said all right so your pattern says to chain three and turn and you're just stitching double crochet rows <clears throat> so you want to chain four instead of the normal three you're going to put your hook through the second chain and then you'll put your hook through down here where your next double crochet will go yarn over and finish off that double crochet okay and so basically what you're doing is stitching a linked double crochet into your chain three and then if you have regular double crochets or linked double crochets for the rest of your row it's going to eliminate that hole that's right there because you did a little stitch in there it's just a simple simple way so that you don't have a hole like this all right so you can chain two instead of chain three or you can do a linked double crochet <clears throat> the other thing that you can do is called a standing double crochet all right instead of doing a chain three you can do what's called a standing double crochet all right so I'm going to chain one I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to wrap two wraps around my hook I'm going to go in this first stitch and pull up a loop and you'll have four on there because you've got your beginning and so what you'll do is you'll yarn over and go through the first two and then yarn over and go through those last three and this only happens when you're doing it at the beginning there okay the rest of the row and then you won't have a hole right here all right all right so we're going to chain one because we're at the end of the row and turning we're going to put two wraps on our hook and we'll go right in that first stitch 
and go through it just like we're doing a double crochet you're just going to have that third loop because you're at the beginning where we normally do a chain three all right <clears throat> and then you'll just do your regular double crochet <clears throat> so there's three ways that you can eliminate these holes and depending on what I'm making depends on what I use to do that a lot of times I really just prefer to do the half or I'm sorry the chain two not the half double crochet because it's a nice easy fix but this is my second best which is the linked linking your double crochet to your chain three because I think it makes a much better turn and then this one it's a little bulky but it does work nicely all right so there's three different ways to do that and there are lots of different videos on these um there we go there's a lot of different videos on these of ways that you can do that um it's it's when you're making like a long blanket um and you've got long rows i'll usually use the chain two if I'm doing like a shorter thing, maybe a thin scarf or something, and I don't want that hole in there, then I'll use one of those other methods. All right. Um, the uh, standing double crochet makes it, in my opinion, a little bit too bulky for some um, things, where the link double crochet really is, if I'm making shorter things, my favorite way to do that. If I'm doing big things, I really just do the chain two. And like I said, it just depends on what you're making, it, it, how you want that to look. The main thing is you don't want to have those big holes in there if it's not what you want, okay? And I don't usually tell you to chain two instead of three or use these other methods because lots of people are learning to crochet. And um, the first thing they need to just learn is to... Um, uh, just crochet normally and learning where to put your stitches if your chain three counts as your first double crochet not to stitch in that first one but to go in that second one and Let's see Jolene says I've seen people chain one and then do a double crochet in the first stitch you can that it just depends on the technique you're using these are for when the pattern calls for these three techniques when the pattern calls for you to do a chain three and that for and that it counts as your first double crochet and when i show you these things remember as the way that i think about crochet is that you have to do what works best for you and the project that you are doing okay if you're not comfortable doing these other methods don't do them if you're not comfortable having a hole there then try another method that's the thing about crochet just because you do something a little bit different doesn't make it wrong it just makes it different <laughs> and that's what i try to express all the time you know there are hundreds and hundreds of, of crochet designers out there that do things completely different than i do and i always tell people i'm home i'm old school not homeschool i'm old i'm old school not just because i'm old but <laughs> i'm old school i do things the old-fashioned way and then if i learn a new technique i'll try that also you know, and there's lots of things that, it's, it's, and I've said this before, it's really kind of funny because um, these people will think they come up with a new stitch and they'll give it a new name. And it's something, you know, some of us that have been crocheting for years and years already know how to do. It's just got a different name. And that's okay. I don't, I don't mind. You know, it's, uh, to me, they're learning crochet and trying to get it out there. So I don't mind. <laughs> so anyway. I just wanted to show that show you that I've got a lot of questions about um, people not liking having that hole there. And again, it's for when your pattern says chain three counts as your first double crochet. All right. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um. Also, that technique, you have to be careful to count your stitches correctly. There are some other methods that you can do. And some of those other methods add a, a stitch or subtract a stitch. So be real careful when you're doing those rows to count your stitch. Of course, I always say count your stitches. That's important, you know, for things to work, you know. So anyway, um, it, if you want a more of an explanation, 
There are several, I mean, not just several, lots of these explanations on the link double crochet, on the standing double crochet, and uh, filling in your holes um, on YouTube. There are literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of videos, <laughs> you know. And again, you have to do what works best for you. Okay, now, let's talk about one other thing. I forgot to show you um, <clears throat> when I um, went to Hobby Lobby, some yarn that I found. And it's new yarn that I, it may not be new because sometimes I'll show you new yarn and people say, that's not new, but this is new to me. All right, so I'm going to show you this. It's so pretty. This is by Yarn B. It's called Ethereal Eyelash. Five ounces. Look at the fuzz on that. Isn't that beautiful? I bought some other yarn that had a brush to it, but it was not this fuzzy. I think it was called Yarn ID. And I don't think they even make that anymore, but I do have some. It's 75% acrylic, 25 poly, poly, I can never say this word, so I'm just going to show it to you. Polyamide, amide, polyamide, polyamide, there we go, got it. <laughs> and it's, by, po, anything made polyester is pretty much similar to acrylic. It's going to melt if you get it in, in the heat, basically. All right, and they had lots of colors. I picked up these three colors. This is, where did the color go? Oh, it's a color, let's see, ivory. This one is a green, it's called jade. And this one is a beige. And I have, it's kind of funny. Um, let me see what if they, what they got the name on here. Color is oat. And these three colors, they're, you wouldn't, let me push the thing out of the way. You wouldn't think these are Christmas colors, but I've got a Christmas idea I want to do with these. Sort of a country fuzzy Christmas um, project. So anyway, I wanted to show you those. Um, Hobby Lobby just had some of their big sales and they've got a bunch of new yarn coming out. Michael's had a big sale. They've got a bunch of new yarn coming out as well as Joann's. Now Joann's um, is the biggest place that you can go to with the most amount of an assortment. What I call a plethora. A whole lot of a whole lot of kinds of yarn you can find at Joann's. I have not yet found a Joann's here yet in my area. I found the Michaels in Oklahoma City, and of course Hobby Lobbies are everywhere. The Hobby Lobby company is like 23 square block. It is huge, and they're building on. It's getting bigger and bigger and growing, and um, and so there are Hobby Lobbies all over the place up here, which I love it. Uh, what is the weight of the yarn? It's a medium four, I believe. Let me look. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where's the square? It's actually a bulky five, and that's probably because of the fuzz. So it is a bulky five. I was incorrect. Although, if you look at the strands themselves, it the strand itself looks like a four, a medium four, but because of all this fuzz, they're probably calling it a five. Um, the recommended crochet hook is a five millimeter, which is what I use a lot of times for medium weight number four. So anyway, um, I um, I did not buy uh, any new yarn at Michael's when I was there um, this time. And and that's because they were doing a big reset at the one that I was at. And it, was, it wasn't a mess. It just needed to be, you know, stocked and organized. So next time I go to Michael's, I'll see. But um, do, one of the things I've learned about Michael's is you can get just a good, just as good of sales on their website as you can going to the store. So anyway, I'm getting, I keep getting signals that I'm not getting a good um, um, connection for some reason. And I've not had that before. So I'm not, uh, so if I click off again, I'll just, I'll let you go. But I'm going to try to keep going, okay? Now I wanted to show you what we did yesterday. This is my pillow. I just love this. And this is our Scrap Happy Bolster Pillow. And it's a really neat texture. It's really easy. And it has, of course, the two ends. It's really easy to stitch up. And it's, of course, I use tons of my, not tons, bunches of my striping yarns. I've got variegated with this beige striping yarns. I've got this, is that Red Heart? And then this is uh, um, Premier, I think it's called Cupcake or Cake. 
birthday cake, something, I don't know. But they're striping yarns, all medium weight, number four acrylic. And you can keep doing those rows until it's as long as you want to. And this one I'm putting on my bed in my guest room because my, my grandkids love to play in there and they like to lean their iPads on the pillows to play their games. And so uh, my, one, my, my two granddaughters love to do art. They do all these coloring and drawing things. So anyway, that is our Scrap Happy project for August. And I was down here working on the one for September while I was waiting for everything to get set up. So um, we did that. Then if, if you look over here, I'm going the wrong way. We did the scarf and the for the uh, school spirit, um, the match all the school spirit stuff. Uh, we did a school spirit hat. We did a school spirit headband. We did school spirit fingerless gloves and school spirit cowl. And again, all these things that you make in school colors do really, really well at um, craft sales around school time because people like to have things made in their school colors. And I've done in the past, it's done really well. I even made dog bandanas in school colors and people really, really like them. All right, so just a note, and that other thing that we did was the football applique. Football is great big around here. I even had a young man come to my door yesterday for me to buy some things to support our Mustang Broncos because the Mustang um, mascot is the Broncos and um, to buy to help support the football team. And so you can use these football appliques. And of course, this is our sport, a spirit team, <laughs> our spirit, our school spirit hat. And this is our school spirit headband that I added those onto. They're just pinned on. I didn't sew them on just so that you could see them. You could add it to the fingerless gloves, to the, to the scarf and cowl or anything that you want to. Um, you could add those on. Okay. And so that's just something fun that I wanted to do. And so this week, we're, we're all finished with the school spirit um, items. And so we're getting back into doing some other things um, this week. But I'm going to tell you up front, I'm not sure there'll be a video on Thursday. There won't be one tomorrow because Wednesday is my grandchild day. I spend the day with my grandkids. And this is our last Wednesday before school starts because school starts on Thursday for my two of my grandkids. My youngest granddaughter is homeschooled. And so, um, um, so tomorrow's going to be our last day for the three of us to get together for a, uh, oh, we call it Oma on Grandkid Day. So anyway, um, uh, Kim, you don't have to use the school, the team spirit yarn. You can use any yarn, any medium weight number four yarn. So anyway, um, um, she asked me about the Team Spirit yarn a couple of days ago, and you used to be able to find it on Mary Maxim and Hershner's, and then there's one other one. Hershner's. I can't remember. There were three different places where I had found it. They don't make it anymore on Red Heart, so you probably won't find it on Yarn Inspirations. And, um, but <clears throat> it would have two colors, uh, long striping yarn. Um, I think I have one over there. That blue and that blue one right there. That's a, that's one, and then there's one that that's the same up higher. I think. Let's see. Yeah, there's two there that are the same, blue and orange. I bought those because they were Denver Broncos colors, and then I never did anything with them. That's really bad. How do you wash and dry pillow from last video? Oh, are you talking about my this? I throw my pillows on the gentle cycle in my wash machine with just a small amount of the liquid. I use uh, the liquid Tide that doesn't have any perfumes or dyes in it. It's just, it's white, it's clear actually, and I use their pods. But anyway, I do it on gentle, and then I put it in the dryer with my towels, and I've never had any trouble. I've e I even washed a whole bunch of these because milk got spilt on them when they were over here playing. We have a big living room. They like to throw them around, hit each other with them. <laughs> but I, I put a whole bunch of these in there, washed them. Of course, I had to take the tags off and dried them in the dryer, and they did just fine. Um, just with yarn, make sure you wash it um, on gentle. And then 
I put it in the dryer with my towels and they, they dry just fine. But if you're worried, like sometimes I make an afghan or a baby blanket and I don't want it to be dried on hot. And so I'll take it out and I'll, I, and when we lived in Colorado, I had a large balcony um, off my deck and I would hang my blankets over the balcony and flip them a couple of times in the sun. Well, I don't have that here. I have a fence, but I don't want to put it up against the fence because I don't know what's on the other side. <laughs> and so what I do now is I just, I just, for the small items, I'll lay them on top of my dryer while it's drying. And then for the larger items, I'll just dry it on gentle. Um, that's not high heat. And then I'll lay it out in the sun on my patio table. So, you know, th there's a lot of those kind of things that you can do. I know a lot of yarn says, you know, uh, wash and dry in your dryer. But I'm just, my thing is I want it to last as long as possible because I put a lot of time and effort into making that. And when I make things, to me, it's art. You know, it's my designs and, and art and, and colors and things that I put together. And so I want to do the best I can. Um to take care of it she says i'm worried about the filling the stuffing that a polyester fiber field does just fine it's made to be washed that's why they you recommend that opposed to any of the cotton or other types of filling i mean i wash my comforters they have polyester inside of them i duvet covers and things um i wash all my pillows off my off my bed and off my couches and and stuff i do all of that um in my washer and dryer you moved what? <laughs> yeah, I moved like four months ago. <laughs> um, if you go back and, and watch all my videos, you'll on uh, um, you'll see how we moved and reset up the yarn room and all that stuff. And we're getting ready to move again. Um, we uh, I uh, I'm originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, but we were living in Colorado in the Parker area, which is kind of south of Denver. We lived there for ten years with my husband's company. Uh, they sold the company and he retired and so we moved to Oklahoma and we're living in Mustang, Oklahoma, which is, you know, outside of Oklahoma City. My daughter and her husband live here with my two grandkids, Aiden and Callie. Remember, they used to come visit in the summer. And then my son, Daniel, and his wife, Christina, they moved their company down here to Oklahoma City with their grand with my granddaughter of course Zoe and so it's kind of fun because my my both my children my son and my daughter and their families and their kids all live in this area um, my daughter and her husband and the kids live in Mustang my son and his wife and daughter live in Yukon it's just like right up the road a couple of miles it takes me 12 minutes to get to their house so um yeah we're all down here having a blast and having some fun sweating our brains out in this hot humidity and the dune bugs haven't been too bad so we haven't we had an offer on our colorado house um a couple weeks or about a week ago and um it was a little low and so we we weren't able to take it we did a counter offer we're still waiting to hear on and then we had a huge a bunch of people come and look at it this weekend and so we're going to go ahead with the house that we're buying here the house that we're in is not the house we're buying this house that we're in is a rental. The people that we rented from are wonderful. They're working with us and everything. Um, and um, we're trying really hard to keep this house super duper clean. Makes it easier when you move out when you rent. <laughs> it's been a long time since we rented because we've always bought for many, many years. And so anyway, um, yeah, we're going to be moving probably end of September again to our new place. So... Um, yeah, we moved. <laughs> so anyway, I know if you want to know all the details and everything that's been happening in the last few months, um, go back and watch all the old live videos because from the very beginning of finding out when we were moving until we moved and the process and all of that, I will tell you probably that, that week in September, I'll probably have to take a break because we're gonna to have to repack and move. And then what's so funny is the house that we're buying is like two miles, maybe three miles away, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> it's just a hop, skip and a jack and we'll jump. We'll be even closer to my daughter and her husband. We'll be about two miles from their house. So anyway, it'll be kind of fun. Um, and we have learned a lot about patience in the last couple of weeks. We've learned a lot about, um, 
dealing with things that you're uncomfortable with. <laughs> You know, we've had issues with health, issues with our dogs. You know, um, we even had trouble with the garage door here. It wouldn't open. I got stranded. You know, things like that. And so um, moving is hard. Uh, relocating, finding doctors, dentists, veterinarians, and eye doctors and things like that. Getting new insurance. You know, getting a new driver's license. You know, new tags on the car. You know, all those things you just forget about once you're resettled, you know. And we were in Colorado. We loved living there for 10 years. And um, so I kind of miss my house and I kind of miss the weather because I was in Colorado where we were at and up in Parker, you would get up in the morning, even when it was really hot during the day, but the mornings would be cool. And I would go out on my back deck and have my coffee, you know, and now if I go outside at six in the morning, it's 80 degrees, <laughs> you know, so it's different. Um cat are you talking about a cat now we can't have a cat my husband and my uh uh one of my grandkids and my daughter they're all allergic to cats so no cats although i like cats i grew up with a cat named edith she was a beautiful cat she was big like a tabby but she had the markings of a siamese cat so pretty and she had two different colored eyes one green and one blue and she she was my kitty cat until i think she lived to be 16 and then she passed away. But anyway, I loved her, but we can't have cats. That's okay. Chihuahuas act like cats. And believe me, when you have two chihuahuas, that one that's 14 and one that's 15, it's like having newborn babies again. I'm serious. <laughs> they have so many needs. Lots of potty breaks. They're hungry all the time. <laughs> they whine and they cry at you. The only difference is you can leave the house and leave them here occasionally. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> um, um, I think that's all I've got this week. Uh, we talked about yarn, all the new things. Um, my, if you want to hear a really bad joke, watch the beginning of the video because that joke was terrible that I tried to tell. <laughs> Sorry, I am not good at telling jokes. I am just not good at it. My granddaughter can tell a knock-knock joke and um she's she's great at it <laughs> and you'll laugh forever so anywho um penny if you go to my uh youtube channel in my playlist i have a bunch of fun halloween hats and other halloween items just go to the sarah's hatch youtube channel Go to the the play the little thing playlist, and there's there's tons of Halloween ideas in there. I've got all kinds of hats and other things in there. Just put Halloween, and it'll come up. I don't know what that means. Um, am staff. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go with that. I hope that um, you have a wonderful day. I'm looking at my notes here, seeing if I missed anything, and I didn't. And anyway, if you want to um, find the... Oh, don't forget about our giveaway this month. My chair's squeaky. Remember, we're giving away four cakes of the Mandela Tweed and the, the Canvas twi Twitter bag. <laughs> my canvas zipper bag <laughs> with coffee and crochet on the front and in order to get to be a part of this giveaway you have to go back to last week's live video and comment that's all you have to do so don't forget to get involved in that and remember all the patterns that i show you on my youtube channel live you can go to my youtube channel and find them you can also when the video is over go down in the notes underneath this video and the links are there and underneath every video is a link that will take you to the written pattern with pictures okay all right whoo we made it through <laughs> i'm gonna let you guys go and i'll see you next week